Hello, my name is Eric Mathis, and I am one of the lab leaders here at the Spartan Debate Institute. Today, we will be talking critique strategy in general. I will not be discussing specific authors, as those conversations can occur in lab, but I wanted to give you a better understanding of criticisms in general, how to deploy them, and how to answer them. As you learn more about specific critiques, you can hopefully use this as a blueprint utilizing those critiques both on the AF and on the negative. So let's dive in. First, let's start with the definition. A critique, in my opinion, is an argument that criticizes the assumptions, methods, and or values that make an affirmative appear desirable. When I say desirable, I mean what makes the affirmative attractive to judges and debaters to make them want to vote for it and research it. Generally, this means going beyond just impacts of the 1AC, but looking behind the scenes of the affirmative and looking at what is unsaid in the 1AC. The unsaid is the assumptions that is that makes the 1AC desirable. Its purpose, the critique, is to bring structural and, and or historical concerns into debate. Prior to 1991, which is when critiques first began in debate, debate utilized fiat as a model to have discussions over the cost benefits of certain scenarios. Critiques are not concerned about fiat and instead, Critiques treat the 1AC as a construct, an area of study to be analyzed. Then here is your first vocabulary word, construct. When I say the 1AC as a construct, what do I mean? Well, first let's look at Oxford's dictionary, which says a construct is an idea or the theory containing various conceptual elements, typically one considered to be subjective and not based on empirical evidence. So because the definition says construct is an idea or theory considered to be subjective, what we are saying is that the 1AC presents a worldview. A worldview can also be known as an assumption. Because the ideal is subjective, that means it is not a fact. It is not a complete truth, but an assumption about the world, aka a worldview. You see, the affirmative isn't concerned about making ethical changes to systems or institutions. Instead, it takes those things as given and being the acceptable mode for making change. Traditional affirmatives are focused on a problem solution way of acting, meaning the 1AC sees a problem and then proposes a solution to said problem. The criticism is seeking to criticize that existing order. It says, before we take action, we need to investigate whether or not the political action the AF takes is ethical in the first place. A critique may also say that behind every political action, there is a hidden assumption that must be interrogated and failing to do so has a set number of con set negative consequences. Here's an example. What if the SDI debate camp told you that Repco's fast food restaurant is the preferred food of choice to feed hungry students during the camp. Well, yes, if students are indeed hungry, then feeding them is good. But the critique would say, well, behind this action is some assumptions that we think are problematic. Should we eat, be eating Repco's food in the first place? What does it mean to serve children a type of food that generally isn't healthy? What if the hungry students are also black? Why is it okay to serve black students the lowest common form of food that you wouldn't serve other students? What if Repco's method of maintaining profits comes at the expense of the workers in their factories? All of these are examples of what, it would be, what, what an assumption would be and can lend themselves to problematic future actions because the passage of the plan means that these assumptions made by the 1AC is correct or necessary. Since they are necessary, then this way of thinking will also continue unabated. This is the basis of critique link debating, but we'll discuss that coming up. For now, let's talk about the parts of a critique. For those who may not know, the critique is an off-case position. Its shell includes the following, generally a link, an impact, potentially a reason to prioritize or view the debate differently, and an alternative, AKA a different approach to the world. What you don't see in this shell that you may see in a disad is uniqueness. D 
DAs are plan focused. They are concerned with the outcome of an implemented plan. A critique is focused on the 1AC and the choices that go into creating the 1AC and what story it tells, aka the worldview. In saying that a DA and counter plan are plan focused, that means that they are concerned with a unique outcome that the plan and only the plan has a certain set of outcome. That's why uniqueness means that the plan and only the plan can cause these set of consequences. We are not comparing the 1AC to a stable status quo. Remember, we are treating the 1AC as a construct, a unit of study. Before I move further, I do want to uh, give some definition to a few important key terms. First is epistemology. The term is derived from the Greek term epistemine and logos, and according to, accordingly, excuse me, the field is sometimes referred to as the theory of knowledge. Aristotle basically said, nearly all human beings wish to comprehend the world they live in, and many of them construct theories of various kinds to help them make sense of it. But, and this is where the debate part of this comes in, more humans at some point stopped attempting to make sense of the world and ultimately became content with what they knew and they just sort of stuck with it. This becomes the new truth for those individuals. Critiques are designed to expose truth claims of the 1AC. All parts of the 1AC, plans, advantages, solvency, all have certain assumptions. Because if the negative can find a flawed claim in the 1AC, then they can disrupt the true claim and potentially its ability to claim that they can solve something or make a change from the status quo for the better. The next term is one you probably have heard, and it is ontology, the study of being. Race, gender, sexual orientation, ability, or any permutation of these categories, ontology studies how they relate to the world around them. How does society relate to these different categories, say, differently than other categories? How do black people relate to policing as opposed to white people? These are questions of ontology, and in debate, we seek to challenge these ontologies or expose how affirmatives ignore these ontological relationships. Now, if you need a bit of a five minute break, please take one now, because our next session is about section is about the importance of each part of the criticism. Welcome back. Let's start with links. Links here are different than say links on a dis ad. DA links are cause and effect, A equals B, B equals C, etc. The plan causes the change to some sort of event generally found in, in, the uni in the uniqueness debate. X bill will pass now, but the plan causes that bill not to pass. Critique links are examples of choices that the 1AC has made. And we talked about this earlier, examples of assumptions the 1AC has made. Remember, we are criticizing the values of the 1AC. Our link arguments are an example of where those assumptions and choices show up in the 1AC. Why does critiques use assumptions? Why do critiques, excuse me, use assumptions? The answer is because all things make assumptions. The camp AV you will learn and potentially research a new AV makes assumptions about the world because people have come to a place where they construct certain ideals and assumptions to help them establish the world around them. The goal of the negative team is to expose those assumptions to reveal truths or worldviews that could be dangerous. Critique links equal assumptions, which is the key takeaway. Now, how do we use links in debate? The 1 and C will make an assumption about, let's say, water policy and its relationship with the issue of the critique, whether it be set call, anti-blackness, capitalism, etc. The link may say that water reform policies invest in a capitalist form of control over environmental resources, and this is an assumption that is a flawed way to understand the world. Links help decide the importance of that assumption or advocacy of the 1AC. Critiques say, is it important for us to make that assumption in order to vote affirmative? Is this assumption necessary to the affirmative? Then the affirmative carries with it a set of dangerous assumptions and thus we need to analyze them in order to determine its overall effect for overall effect on the world around us. 
To use last year's topic as an example, the abolition critique says that reforms of the criminal justice system are investment in a flawed system of criminality. And in order for someone to believe in those reforms, absent totally abolishing it, merely reinvest in some notion that imprisonment is an effective mode of punishment. Is that assumption necessary to implement the affirmative? The critique would say yes, and would say that that is a dangerous assumption to carry forward. Another uh, uh, sort of phrase you may hear on critique debates is theories of power. Links are great, ooh, links are great ways to establish certain theories of power that affirm to support. First, before we go further, what is a theory of power? A theory of power is a set of beliefs that dictate how a world operates. It helps establish what values are believed to be good or bad. Links, by using assumptions about the construction of the 1AC, negative teams can compare how the 1AC is an investment in a particular theory of power. Another way to put this is links can be used to show how the affirmative does not disrupt problematic theories of power. If the negative can win that a particular theory of power is supported or undisrupted by the 1AC, then later we will discuss the, discuss the impacts, the debate, and how to debate the case. Negatives can do a lot of damage to affirmative's ability to say that they actually accomplish anything of value. Two win C links are extremely important in pointing out, the way, pointing out where the assumptions we believe are flawed appear in the 1AC. But you can also look for potential links in things that are stated in the 2NC, and you should never forget that. You can also discover new links uh, to arguments that may be deployed as well. Before you read any new card, take the time to try to develop analytical link arguments. This, is, this will A, help establish the link wall for your crit criticism, B, put pressure on the affirmative to unravel the new links you've established, and C, help establish new ways to ho hollow out the case, but more on that later. A good framework or blueprint for making 2NC links that are representations of the 1NC link is as follows. You should say our 1NC link evidence says X, but their Jones evidence says Y. That proves that our 1NC, 1NC link evidence is correct. For example, the 1NC link evidence says water reforms are a governmental attempt to promote capitalist ideologies. The Jones evidence says that by, that by quote, the main, event, the main benefit of water reform in America is to improve the efficiency of construction projects, projects throughout the United States, which are critical to economic development. That proves the affirmative goal is to bolster the capitalist system. Yes, this is probably a bit of a crude example, but if you follow this, blue, this formula, then you will be able to establish a link wall for your criticism that is much more valuable than just reading cards. Now, how can we use links to debate the case? A lot of times you will hear people say that links are DAs to the case or DAs to the perm. But this is important because we've talked about how links are used to expose flawed assumptions in the 1AC, but now let's talk about how we can use them to debate the case. So because links are a value or an assumption that is dangerous or flawed, we also say that there is an example of them showing up in the 1NC. Remember, that's the 2NC link debate. We know we must begin, now we must begin to illustrate to the judge how or why those things either produce bad policies or help solidify bad theories of power. If we combine these two things, you'll, you'll be debating the case by saying, in this situation, we ought not be affirming these kinds of policies. Here's an example of a blueprint for developing 2NC link arguments that turn the case. If you're using it like an assumption of the 1NC, you, you want to use your link arguments in conjunction with your impact art to say why the ad either doesn't do what it says it can do or makes the situation worse. Here's the example. The 1NC link evidence says water reforms are a governmental attempt to promote capitalist ideologies. The Jones evidence proves this by saying, quote, the main benefit of water reform in America is to improve the efficiency of construction projects through the, throughout the United States, which are critical to economic development. That proves that the affirmative's goal is to bolster the capitalist system. The capitalist system 
is hell-bent on environmental degradation. This means that the 1NC cannot solve its own advantage because the investment in capitalist ideologies only replicate the conditions of the status quo. If you were talking about a particular theory of power, then maybe you would uh, talk about those theories of power and discuss its importance to, well, let me say it this way. When talking about theories of power, it is important to think of this as if you were saying, since a particular theory of power is violent against certain groups, this means the failure to disrupt this theory of power, AKA the root cause of violence, means the people that the 1AC seeks to benefit will never see the benefit produced by the 1AC. For example, the 1NC link evidence says water reforms are a governmental attempt to promote racist ideologies. The Jones evidence proves this by saying, quote, the main benefit of water reform in America is to improve the livelihood of poor black communities in the United States. Their Jones evidence frames all black communities as poor and in need of saviorship by the USFG. Our link and impact evidence concludes that the continuation of these types of ideologies will always leave black bodies in a space of constant degradation, which ensures continued racialized pollution and surveillance by the USFG, meaning the 1AC cannot help black communities escape the root cause of violence they've experienced. These are just two ways to handle links turn the case, but I think if you practice this, uh, this way, you may end up finding yourselves winning more critique debates on the negative. Now, I don't need to discuss, say, impact, because they're no different than on a disad, something bad happens, those things won't really change that much. But I do want to talk about framework or a reason to prioritize. If the link arguments are true, why do they matter? In the world of uniqueness, it doesn't matter. They're, they're just interesting facts, nice little FYIs. Framework explains why link matter, why the links matter, excuse me. Uh, it brings into debate a different set of considerations for how we should judge the debate. These all have different names, but they sort of function the same. Let's take prior issue. You may have heard this in a debate before. Prior issue is the problems, the problems, assumptions, and assumptions need to be addressed before other things are considered. The way the one is, the way the affirmative says we've decided the debate cannot take place until the assumptions have been tested. Framework says the critique may decide a different framework for deciding the debate or a different role of the ballot, which is something you may hear a lot. Most affirmatives assume that the judge is a policymaker. Should the judge increase protections of water resources? Yes or no. In this circumstance, you should think or act, well, the, excuse me, the framework or changing the framework would say in this circumstance, you should think or act differently and we are evaluating the effects of the plan, but also its advocacy. Let me say this again. When we change the way in which we decide the debate, the critique says in this circumstance, you should think or act differently. We should evaluate the, not only the effects of the plan, but its advocacy. When I say advocacy, I'm referring to the values that we discussed earlier when it came to the links. So what does it mean to endorse the 1AC? Basically, should we either not endorse the outcome of the 1AC? Or in order for us to support the 1AC, we'd have to consider endorsing some sort of unethical act along with it. Here's an example that relates to this year's topic. The plan may say that we should increase protection of water resources in the United States, or it will ask the question, should we increase protection of water resources in the United States? The negative could say, we shouldn't even consider the benefits of protecting water resources because we are asking the wrong question. The question we should be asking is why do black and brown communities, hence the alternative you see is shifting the discussion away from the 1AC to a different point of the debate by saying that the question answered by the 1AC is the wrong question to be answered. And that by using the links, they can establish why the AV is potentially unethical or of no benefit at all. Think of it this way. If poor black communities are suffering at the hands of lack of protection of water resources, a criticism may just simply say, we should be asking a prior question, which is why do black and brown communities always find themselves in a space of degradation as opposed to white communities? This is the way in which the framework, the prior issue, the 
prioritization changes the debate. Now, the last category on the negative side is the alternative. Alternatives are not counterplans. I want to stress this. This gets said a lot by people and it is incorrect. It differs in, counter in DA counterplan debates because it is not concerned with uniqueness. It is a way of judging instead of, say, a presented task to the judge. It is saying that we should think differently or thinking differently in this way is critical for us to understand the correct questions we need to be asking so we can solve the correct problems in the future. One way to think about it is to think through these two ideas. We talked about it earlier, but the affirmative operates in sort of problem solving theory. It takes the world as it is. I.e. the affirmative we talked about is merely looking to solve a problem that is all. Critical theory is concerned with seeking new ways of understanding the world. I .e. that is the alternative. Remember, the alternative is saying the question we have asked is incorrect and we need to see the world differently in order for us to truly resolve any of the material problems that could be occurring in the status quo. You may hear this in debates, but you may hear someone say our alternative problematizes the affirmative. That means it turns a bunch of assumptions, aka the links, back into problems, which forces the affirmative back to the drawing board. You see, if there is a link to the AV, that is a question, it is not solved. It is not solved that question, then the, it is a prior issue we need to resolve because the AV doing anything doesn't resolve the root cause of violence. So if the affirmative has not answered the correct problem, go back to our discussion on white links here, like I said before. And if we win that our links are the root cause of particular types of violence, then we can win that the question answered by the affirmative, i.e. the resolution, is actually to no benefit. In the end, the alternative is to advocate for thinking differently about the status quo, because the question of the resolution does not address the root cause of problems, and that question tries to answer, or that the resolution tries to answer. Now, some of you may say, Eric, but can't we just say the AF or the alternative solves the AF? It depends. Some critiques aren't concerned with policy action, so maybe the process of problematizing the alternative, we need to find like a solution to fixing the links. It could be resolved, and that could also solve the advantages. But you will want to say that we will solve the root cause of why the advantages are occurring in the first place, or the harms of the 1AC is occurring in the first place. So when we say that we solve the AF, we do not do the plan, but we saw the advantages, okay? And that's an important point to make. Again, uh, this is a good time to take a five to 10 minute break. Uh, really appreciate you hanging in there with me. Uh, the next thing we're going to discuss uh, is answering critiques and how you should approach uh, certain types of critiques. Welcome back. So let's talk about how to answer critiques. Before writing your 2AC, the most important question you should ask is, is, the alt, is this an alt where I will go for the permutation or is this an alt where I will be going for the alt doesn't solve? You can do both in a 2AC, but you should only do one in the 2AR. One way you can think, one way you can, uh, you can't, one way you should know that you can't go for the perm is if the critique is an utter rejection of political action and you don't have great answers to the inevitable DA links to the permutation. If you don't have great answers to their links to the permutation, then you need to go for the alt doesn't solve. Some, some may wonder if you can win at the AF outweighs the critique, outweighs the critique, excuse me. Uh, the answer is yes, but it's a little tricky. You need to win that the AF does something good and that the, and that the critique cannot, I'm sorry, let me say it again. You need to win that the AV does something good and that that good thing cannot be resolved by the alternative. That plus winning some level of link defense and framework would be the way to go to win that sort of debate. There are a set of cross X questions too you should also ask. Before even like sitting down or being ready to like read your pre-prepared blocks, you wanna ask the following four questions. One, can the alternative solve the AV? If they say yes, then this will probably mean you need to read a theory argument called floating picks. Two, if you are confused by the critique, 
Ask for the link arguments, and it's okay to be confused. Even the best judges sometimes when they're listening to critiques may not understand what the team is saying. And if the team can't explain what the link is, most judges are gonna be very, very skeptical voting for that criticism. Ask what does the alternative do, advocate for, or say? Whatever they say, make sure that you understand what it does and try as hard as possible to figure it out. Whatever, yeah, yeah, sorry. Four, ask if we win, your authors agree with us, do we win the debate? If no, why not? There are some criticisms out there that actually have cards that advocate for various forms of political action. If we win, did your authors conclude with us, is there any real reason to vote, not vote for us on the criticism? Try to get a lot of these block answers flushed out so it helps the 1ARs begin to write their answers to potential block arguments that will be coming uh, later in the debate. Now, let's go over the typical 2AC versus criticisms. The first argument you should always make is framework. Because most negatives are more than happy to wish away any benefit the affirmative may have, it is imperative that you keep the affirmative alive. The neg says fiat is illusory, and you should stay sure, but that fiat is necessary to have a productive conversation over the cost benefits of an action, AKA it is key to clash. Yes, we know fiat is illusory, but that doesn't mean that we cannot test the ideals presented in the 1AC. Most framework arguments boil down to weigh the AMF. And since framework arguments are a means to evaluate which impacts matter more in debate, this is generally the best middle ground for affirmative teams. Way the Ave essentially says we get to defend ourselves and don't wish away our impacts. Before I move on further and talk about other parts, I wanna talk about defending your research. This has become a very, very important part of debate, I would say over the last few years. And I think it's important that we understand how we need to answer these arguments before moving forward. Now, now the way, now the way that a K team uses their critique against you is instead of critiquing say the 1AC, they may critique the research practices you've used to create the 1AC. Some people call this a framework K or a research K. Um, I'm not really sure what the correct definition is, so don't, don't yell at me if you're like, I think it's a framework K. This is generally done, uh, or sorry, this uh, critique is generally done by saying that the research you produce or incentivize is dangerous or unethical. To counter this, you should do the following things on top of saying framework way our app is key to clash. Number one, have, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> affirmers should give some thought about how they research and why it is good and is important to focus on legal reform. You can learn, sorry, you can learn about these things. Sorry, let me say it just, I apologize. You should say that learning about these things make us better advocates for future change. Having like one card saying topic education slash reform is a good method of study is a good idea. This helps establish a philosophical reason for why voting for the AF is good. Number two, you should make an argument about there's no subjectivity link. The basis of this research or framework argument is that we do, what we do inside debate is what we'll do outside of debate. It's important to push back against this claim. You should make a well-reasoned argument that says, debate doesn't produce subjectivities, but other things outside of debate affects that more. Things like family, friends, church, or just your own personal beliefs. I believe having two additional cards underneath framework that speak to these two points are a far better use of the two ACs time than reading two or three cards that won't make it into the 1AR or cards that are repetitive in the two AC. Now, Answering standard critiques. Now that we discuss framework, let's talk about how to answer standard critiques. There's a simple acronym for understanding or answering critiques, it's called POSTAL. After a uh, framework, these are the next steps you should take. POSTAL means perm, offense, solvency deficit, theory, alt plus root cause answers, and link answers or the link debate. So let's talk about perms. Much like counterplans, there is no limit to the number of perms you can use. Critique perms need to be designed to solve the links of the critique while also solving the affirmative. A card here is helpful. In the 1AR, if you are going to, if you are going to go for the perm, you need to establish 
and, and extend it and explain why the permutation resolves are the links. This can be accomplished by using the idea of the, of the perm double bind. If the alternative can resolve the links, then it should be strong enough to resolve the residual links of the permutation. This helps lessens the implications of the links, but also allows you to leverage the benefits of the affirmative to say any link that remains, the benefit of the affirmative outweighs the small risk that there are some links. Next is offense. No, this is not saying that you should say isms are good. No, you should not say structural violence is good. Those are all bad no-nos and you will lose. Instead, we will say that disengaging from legal action hinders the plight of individuals and the critique, I'm sorry, hinders the plight of individuals the critique says violence is happening to. So if they say the plan is bad for black people, you need to say that disengaging from political action or ideas is worse for black people. You can also house your sort of ontology and epistemology uh, uh, answers here as well, like saying things like anti-blackness is not ontological. It's totally fine. Uh, much like any link turn on a disad, you want to have the same components here. You want to have the turn, which is the sort of like offensive component. Like not only is it uh, are, is the opposite of what they said uh, worse, but also what we do is good. You can also include a card on this if you have one. But generally, you, should, you can rely on your 1AC to say, here are the benefits of political action, which by proxy is also the opposite of that, is the disadvantages to not act. Next is solvency deficit. You want to explain why the theory of power, the theory of power, uh, we discussed this in the NAG section, does not explain the violence described by the 1AC. For example, if the failure of, let's say, water protections in the status quo is because of capitalist corporations overtaking the area of water reform, you will say that the theory of anti-blackness cannot explain nor uh, cannot explain the capitalist system since those powers operate exclusively within the uh, political world. And since, let's say, Wilderson denies the desire of political investigations, then their critique cannot solve the AF. This level of detail is massively important and needs to be in the 2AC as an analytic hopefully using some cards you may have read in the 1AC as proof of this argument. The proof component is the capitalist corporation of political reform. Next is theory. Similar to most other theory arcs, you should have theory arguments ready to go versus critiques. These things include vague alts. Vague alts just means you have said a bunch of words that no one can understand. Uh, utopian alt, which is just sort of like we get to make everyone love each other. That will be a utopian alt. Um, and condo. My, my position, and this is just me sort of ranting here, but my position is condo is a yes, no question and not a number of off question. So if a K team reads um, the alt conditionally, then you should read condo regardless of the number of off. Next is the alternative debate. This is different than the solvency debate because the alt debate is more about the alt's ability, ability to not solve the links. Maybe they read a link author and an alt author that say and that say disagree on what should be done. Maybe the alt doesn't speak to the issues raised by the links. In the 2AC, you should have a reason for why the alt doesn't solve the links. And for the 1AR, nine times out of 10, the team, the negative team will proliferate links in the 2NC. You should use this to reverse the problematization th uh, argument occurring in the block and say that the alternative cannot possibly solve all those links. Maybe they say a bunch of reasons for why material changes haven't been done, but if the alternative, for example, is not engaged or doesn't want to engage in material actions, i.e. political actions, then it can't solve that link either because it did not engage in the political uh, actions necessary to resolve the links. These are all examples, but generally this is sort of the way in which all answers or all debates generally can go. By the way, have impact defense to whatever their terminal impact is. Like for example, if they recap and they say environmental degradation, you wanna say there's no impact to environmental degradation. A very, very important tool to have. You should also have uh, no root cause in your, uh, in your answers as well, because you don't wanna concede that their theory of power or the link debate 
is the root cause of violence. Having a card or a couple of cards maybe that say no root cause of violence means that their theory or their link arguments can't explain the world and why violence happens no more than say maybe the alternative or the AV or anything else does. But saying that there is no root cause um, uh, reason for why violence occurs helps play defense against these kind of arguments. Let's talk about the, answering the links. Winning no link to some degree is necessary if you want to win the permutation. No link is, is more than no, we don't say racist things and or we don't support neolib, but more importantly that the assumptions the negative have made are not only incorrect, but prove the alt can't solve. Uh, here's an example from a few years ago. Um, I wrote an affirmative about building dams in Africa on a topic long, long time ago. The 1AC says that the world, says that the world is anti-Black and that the 1AC is an investment in that world. The affirmative goes, no, no, no. The status quo is actually in the context of neoliberalism and currently it excludes Africans from participating in neoliberal markets. That is a replication of true racism or a truer form of racism that Africans experience. But because your criticism denies the possibility of the app and it doesn't interrogate capitalism, it cannot explain the violence that is going on and therefore cannot resolve the violence that is going on. After you do those couple that that couple that low that excuse me, that level of work, you can then house your specific answers for like links uh, to critiques. Last but not least, I want to talk about critiques that confuse us all. Uh, sometimes you may hear critiques that don't make a lot of sense, and I apologize if someone gets offended because I said that a critique may not make sense. But this is sort of a crude way of saying that these are critiques that have several moving parts, and the team isn't clear about the purpose uh, or has random links uh, all over the place that can generally mutate into something brand new. There are seven things you want to do in order to prepare yourselves to, do, to be ready to debate these critiques. Number one, spend as much time as possible getting, to them, getting them to explain the links and what if the alt does. Remember the cross -ex section from earlier. If there are multiple link cards, spend time asking how the alt solves all the links and then craft your permutation uh, answers or your permutation of, AF, do, permutation of do the AF plus all the words they said that solve the links generally put you in a good position to win most permutation debates. Number two, it's okay to use prep time to ask questions. You can recover, you can recover from limited prep time, but you cannot recover from a bad 2 AC. So use the prep. Three, never forget the AF is good. Remember, don't let them wish away the affirmative. The AF is good, the AF is important. Four, don't forget about postal. What I probably would do is have a block ready to go that's like answers to critiques we don't understand. And I would have like, you know, subheadings for each component of Postal to make sure I have like cards and analytics ready to go for my given affirmative. Five, use their vagueness to justify newer answers in the 1AR. If they are intentionally being vague about say, you know, about the critique, you should say, if you continue not to answer our questions, we're going to use this as a reason to make new answers in the rebuttals. This kind of threat generally is accepted by judges, and judges are okay granting newer ARGs, especially to critique more into something completely different than it was in the one in C. Six, keep theory alive in the later speeches. Generally, even if it's for a time sub, forcing the negative to have to spend time answering the various theory arguments means that they can they can they have less time to recreate or remorph whatever this critique is talking about. Seven, look for clues about the critique um, in the one and C. Do they say the phrase research that lets you know that the framework or research case is coming? Do they say um, ontology? Then you know that the ontology answers or your your normal block to ontology is necessary. This is a very sort of like condensed uh, version of sort of answer those critiques. And I'm sure you'll learn more about them in your lab, but hopefully you've uh, enjoyed our time together and I appreciate you listening. Welcome to the SDI and we'll talk to you soon.